In this video, we're going to go over two more derivative rules, the power and the scalar rules. Now, these two rules are probably the most widely applicable rules of derivatives that we'll be using. So pay close attention and be sure to resolve any difficulties you might be having with these two rules. So the power rule of derivatives applies when a function is in the form of f of x is equal to x to the power of n. In other words, it's when our x value has an exponent, any exponent. We will use the power rule of derivatives if x has an exponent. Now the derivative when x has an exponent is going to be expressed like this that first derivative, you can write it as dy over dx or f prime of x, is going to be equal to n times x to the power of n minus 1, where n was our original exponent. n was our original exponent. Okay, so I think this is best illustrated using an example, so let's jump right away into an example. So determine the derivative of y is equal to x to the power of 3. Now here's our rule that if we have x to an exponent n, then the derivative becomes n x to the power of n minus 1. So in this case, our n value is 3, our exponent. So that, that derivative dy over dx is going to be equal to First, we have the n term, so in this case n is equal to 3, times x to the power of, then we have n minus 1 as the new exponent, so this becomes 3 minus 1. Let's clean this up a little bit. We have 3 times x to the power of 3 minus 1 is 2. And there is our derivative of the function y is equal to x to the power of 3. There is our derivative, 3x squared. Let's try this again with another example. Here we want to determine the derivative of y is equal to x squared. So here's our derivative rule. This time our exponent, n, is equal to 2. So our derivative here, I'm going to write this as y prime this time, is going to be equal to our n value first. So we put n in front of our x to x to the power of n minus 1, so that exponent minus 1. So y prime will be equal to 2x to the power of 1. Generally we don't write x to the power of 1 and we just leave it as 2x. And that is the derivative of x squared. So really what we're doing is we're taking the exponent we're making it the coefficient, and then we're subtracting 1 from that original exponent. Let's try this one more time. Here we have the function y is equal to x. Now this time we don't have an exponent listed here, but when we have a lone x like this, it's implied that the exponent is 1. So what's the derivative of this function going to be? We have dy over dx. This time my n value is going to be equal to 1. So I bring that exponent in front of that x, 1, x to the power of 1 minus 1, n minus 1, and that gives me 1 times x to the power of 0. Okay, um, for those that can't remember, anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So this really is 1 times 1. Our derivative here is equal to 1. So if we have a lone x value, our derivative is equal to 1, all determined through the power rule. Eventually you'll probably memorize that one, but for now um, you can just use the power rule and get there every single time. So that's a quick illustration of how to use the power rule. Let's try to relate this back to what a derivative is. It's the slope of the function. So let's look at some graphs and see how this is true. Now for our function y is equal to x, we get a graph like this. Now let's examine what the slope is. Now this is a linear equation, so the slope will be the same throughout the entire curve or entire graph. Um, what we can see is that as x increases by one unit, 
y increases by one unit as well. It goes up by one unit. So our slope here would be the rise over the run. It would be positive one rise for a positive one increase in x. Our slope would be one. And that is consistent with what we have for our first derivative. So our first derivative here is measuring that slope. And that slope is constant throughout this entire function as it's a linear function. Now going back, we uh, also had the example of y is equal to x squared. The graph for that function looks like this. So in this function, we can see that the slope is changing throughout and it starts off really, really steep and negative. So it's going to be steep and negative and then it gets to be a little bit more shallow and negative. So it becomes smaller magnitude and negative then it eventually becomes zero at its minimum. Then it starts to become positive, eventually getting to be more and more steep and positive. Well, let's look at this function here and see how that relates. So over here, we had a value of a roughly negative five. So the slope when x is equal to negative five, that slope, I'm gonna denote that as y prime here, is gonna be two times negative five or negative 10. So that's gonna be our base value to compare the rest of these slopes by. And then over here, say at, at negative two, when x was equal to negative two, we had a slope of two times our x value was negative two or negative four. So it's of smaller magnitude, though it's still negative and that's consistent with what we see here. If it's more shallow, the magnitude, the number, becomes smaller. So four compared to 10 is much smaller, but it is still downward slope, so the sign should still be negative. Now what about at x is equal to zero? At x is equal to zero, the slope is two times zero, which gives me zero for the slope, and that is consistent with what we have here. Um, now let's look at something like positive two. When x is equal to positive two, my slope is equal to two times positive two, which is equal to four. Okay, so that is going to be shallow compared to our 10 that we had before, but this time it is positive because it's an upward slope. Finally, let's look at when our, we're at x is equal to positive five. Just giving myself some more space here. At positive five, that slope is going to be two times positive five, giving me a slope of positive 10. So the magnitude here is much higher than at positive two, but the sign and the sign I should say is positive, meaning that we have an increasing slope and it's going to be steeper because the magnitude is larger. So this slope function or derivative we have is very consistent with what we see here for the rate of change of y with respect to x. So this provides us with a good reminder that when we are looking at the derivative, the idea here is always that we are looking at characterizing the rate of change that is happening or the slope. Now there were two rules we're going to go over in this video. This is the second rule. This is the scalar rule of derivatives. Now this applies to any function that is multiplied, multiplied by a constant. Now we write it as such if, if y is some function of x and that, has, that function has a multiplier where there's some constant being multiplied by some function of x, then this is a derivative. Now, for m most of you, this probably looks pretty ugly, so I'm just gonna go to an example, and you'll see that it's actually um, not as ugly as it looks. So here we're being asked to determine the derivative of y is equal to five x. Now this has a slightly different format than what we looked at before, as we have this coefficient five. It's a scalar that our function x to the power of one, is being multiplied by. So this is perfect for the scalar rule. So the scalar rule is saying that when we have some sort of scalar coefficient, in this case five, times some function of x, in this case x to the power of one, how we determine that derivative, dy over dx, 
we are going to first pull out this scalar right here. Pull that out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of our f of x term right here, f prime of x. So in this case, f of x was equal to x to the power of one. So we're going to have to use the power rule, which states that if f of x is equal to x to the power of n, f prime of x is equal to n times x to the power of n minus one. So in this case, with x to the power of one, our n value is equal to one. We're going to make that our new coefficient. So f prime of x is going to be equal to one times x to the power of our old exponent one minus one, or x to the power of zero. This really is equal to one. Combining this all now, our overall derivative is going to be equal to five times f prime of x, which is one, which will be equal to five. So this is our derivative of the function. Let's see how this lines up with the graph and what we can see here when y is equal to five x, what that means is that when x increases by one, y increases by five and we have a slope of five. Let's try this with another example. So here we have the function y is equal to three x squared and we want to determine its derivative. So here we have a scalar coefficient of three for a function f of x is equal to x squared. So this is perfect for using the scalar rule. We have the form a f of x. So we want to do the derivative, derivative saying that it's a f prime of x. So our derivative here, I'm gonna write it as y prime, is going to be equal to a f prime of x. Now our a value is three and f prime of x, we're going to have to use the power rule again. So if f of x is equal to x to the power of n, f prime of x is going to be equal to n x to the power of n minus one. That's our power rule. So what this is going to mean is that our n value in this case for x squared is equal to two. So for the derivative f prime of x, I'm going to take that two, make it the coefficient two x to the power of, and then I have n minus one, so it's two minus one. This is two times x to the power of one, or I just leave it as x. So this is my f prime of x. This was my a value. Now what I do is I combine everything. So I have three times two x, that gives me six x for my derivative. Let's compare this to the graph. And what we see is that we have a very steep slope for this large magnitude values. We have steep slopes and that goes with um, multiplying by x. The larger the magnitude of x, the larger this whole term is going to be, this whole derivative. And it will be negative for the negative values of x. So it'll be downward sloping for the negative values of x and positive sloping for the positive values of x. So for the last two examples, what we could notice is that we had a coefficient, a scalar value, that our function f of x was being multiplied, but each time we had to use the power rule to do the derivative for that f of x. So using the scalar and the power rule together is really common, so we often write them together. So we combine the power and the scalar rules because they are both the most commonly used rules in calculus, and we will write them together in the form of if y is equal to some scalar times x to the power of n, where this scalar value is a constant, then the derivative becomes a, the coefficient, times n, the exponent, times x to the power of that exponent minus one. And this, in essence, is what we did for the last two examples. Now I have one more example for this video, and we're gonna take it up a notch to a slightly more difficult um, exponent.
Now in this example, we are going to determine the derivative of y is equal to 6 times the square root of x. Now, how are we going to use the power rule, you might be asking? This is a square root. Well, let's not forget that this can be rewritten as 6 times x to the power of half. And when we write it in exponent form instead of square root form, we can now apply the power rule to this function. So now we have y in the form of a times x to the power of n, where our a value is equal to 6, and we have x to the power of half, so our n value is equal to half. To do the derivative for this, I'm going to get dy over dx is equal to a n x to the power of n minus 1. So my a value I already determined was 6. My n value, the exponent for x, is equal to half times x to the power of, now I had x to the power of half to begin with, and I subtract 1 from that. So this gives me 6 times 1 half gives me 3 times x to the power of, now what's half minus 1? This is a bit of fraction math. This is half minus 1 is the equivalent of 2 halves. So I get 1 minus 2 over 2, or negative half. So that's my new exponent for x, it's negative half. Now this is a negative exponent, so it's really saying that it wants this term to be in the denominator. So this can also be written as 3 over x to the power of half, or 3 over the square root of x. Both of these answers would be acceptable. So I have my final answer of dy over dx, is equal to 3 over x to the power of half, or alternatively, I might have written it as 3 over the square root of x. And that's using a combination of the scalar and the power rules in this form that you'll be getting on your formula sheet.